His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, paid a visit to the Royal Bahraini Air Force, the RBAF. His Majesty the King was welcomed by the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Majesty was accompanied by National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Also present were BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, RBAF Commander Air Vice Marshal Sheikh Hamad bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and a number of senior RBAF officers. The RBAF commander delivered a statement in which he welcomed the visit of His Majesty the King to the RBAF. He expressed profound thanks and gratitude to His Majesty for his unwavering support to the RBAF, which is a source of pride and appreciation for all its affiliates. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for his constant interest in the RBAF. He also paid tribute to the BDF Commander-in-Chief for his constant follow-up and support for the RBAF. Air Vice Marshal briefed His Majesty the King on the continuous provisions of the latest integrated military system to the RBAF, which the ongoing efforts is to strengthen the capabilities of various BDF units and branches. Then a number of RBAF aircraft conducted a fly pass to welcome His Majesty the King. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the honorable patriotic efforts exerted by the brave RBAF personnel, praising their sincere determination, combat readiness, and distinguished skills to carry out their sacred duties of defending the nation, its accomplishments, and the security of its citizens alongside the BDF. His Majesty congratulated all RBAF affiliates on receiving F-16 Block 70 fighter jets, which are among the latest and most effective military aircraft as part of the plans to advance all BDF branches. His Majesty commended the ongoing military cooperation with brotherly and friendly countries to contribute to safeguarding regional security and global peace, as well as protecting navigation and the flow of energy supplies, in addition to regional and global trade. His Majesty greeted a number of RBAF pilots who took commemorative photos with His Majesty. His Majesty requested the RBAF pilots to convey his greetings and appreciation to all RBAF officers, non-commissioned officers and servicemen, wishing them all continued success.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at the Bia Palace. The cabinet highlighted Bahrain's long-standing commitment to supporting countries in need, led by the vision and directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which includes the recent directives to provide aid to Libya. In this regard, the cabinet noted the urgent humanitarian aid provided to the victims of the floods that swept several regions in the eastern region of Libya. The cabinet expressed its sincere condolences to Libya for the victims of the floods and wished a speedy recovery for those injured and for the safe return of those who are missing. In addition, the cabinet followed up on the measures taken by the relevant authorities around the implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King to provide urgent aid to those affected by the earthquake in Morocco. The cabinet reviewed a report on His Royal Highness's official visit to the United States, commending the importance of the visit and the meetings that His Royal Highness had with U.S. senior officials. The cabinet affirmed that the long-standing Bahrain-U.S. strategic relations will be further strengthened following the signing of the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, which will enhance Bahrain-U.S. cooperation across a range of areas, from defense and security to emerging technologies, trade and investment. The cabinet welcomed Saudi Arabia's efforts in coordination with Oman to invite a delegation from Sana'a to Riyadh to hold discussions in an effort to reach a comp compromise and permanent ceasefire in Yemen and a sustainable political solution acceptable to all Yemeni parties. The meeting also aims to strengthen and expand the humanitarian truce and discuss reaching a sustainable political solution acceptable to all Yemeni parties under the sponsorship of the United Nations. The cabinet reaffirmed the position of Bahrain in support of the Saudi initiative announced in March 2021. The cabinet congratulated the king, government and people of Saudi Arabia on their national day. The cabinet commended the achievements made by Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the support of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. In recognition of the International Day of Peace, the cabinet affirmed Bahrain's commitment to promoting peace to achieve the shared goals of enhancing security and stability and establishing coexistence at the regional and global levels. The cabinet then approved the following, a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the outcomes of the semi-annual closure of ministries and government agencies for the period ending on 30th June 2023. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to issue regulatory requirements for construction across various areas within Bahrain. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to modify certain provisions of the Executive Regulations of the Buildings Regulation Law. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs and the Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure in the UAE for Cooperation in Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between Bahrain News Agency and Agenza National Stampa Associate. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the University of Bahrain and Sultan Qaboos University in the academic and research field. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Municipalities and Agriculture Affairs regarding the acquisition of real estate for public use to provide spaces for urban development. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to two proposals and one draft law submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then took note of the following. The official visit of the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The participation in the 26th meeting of the Committee of Ministers responsible for municipal affairs in GCC countries. The participation in the 5th Budapest Demographic Summit. And the participation in several GCC ministerial meetings addressing trade and industry sectors. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, participated in the GCC Country's Foreign Ministers Meeting, which was held at the headquarters of the Permanent Mission of Amman to the United Nations in New York. 
The ministers discussed current developments in Iraq and the consequences of the federal Supreme Court's ruling regarding the agreement concluded in 2012 between Kuwait and Iraq and on the regulation of maritime navigation in Khor Abdullah and the inaccurate historical merits included in the court's ruling out of context. The ministerial council called on the Iraqi government to take serious and urgent steps to address the negative effects of these developments. The council stressed that these developments do not serve relations with GCC countries and violate international charters, treaties and agreements including Security Council Resolution 833. The meeting also discussed topics on the agenda of the meeting scheduled to be held with foreign affairs ministers and global economic blocs in New York on the sidelines of the UNGA and the developments in current Arab regional and international issues. The ministers also discussed coordinating the positions of GCC countries towards the issues and topics on the agenda of the current session of the UNGA. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met in New York with his Uzbekistan counterparts on the sidelines of the 78th session of the UNGA. The meeting discussed bilateral relations and ongoing development of cooperation between the two countries, in addition to topics of common interest. The permanent representative of Bahrain to the UN Ambassador Jamal Rawai and the accompanying delegation attended the meeting. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also visited the headquarters of the Permanent Mission of Bahrain to the UN in New York on the occasion of Bahrain's participation in the work of the 78th session of the UNGA, where he was received by the Permanent Representative of Bahrain to the UN Ambassador Jamal Rawai, members of diplomatic mission in addition to the delegation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Minister held a meeting during which the arrangements and preparations made by the mission to organize the participation of the Kingdom's delegation in the meetings and events held on the occasion of the UNGA were discussed. He praised the efforts made by the permanent mission and all its members and everything that would implement the foreign policy of Bahrain, build bridges of cooperation and consolidate friendly relations with various brotherly and friendly countries, especially with the UN. He stressed the importance of the work of the UNGA and the high-level conferences and forums that are organized during the work of the session. The Chinese embassy in Bahrain held a reception on the occasion of the 74th anniversary of the founding of China. The celebration was attended by the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem al Bainain, a number of ministers, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Khalifa, and heads of diplomatic missions to the kingdom. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed expressed Bahrain's congratulations to China on the occasion of its National Day, wishing it further progress and prosperity. He praised historical relations of cooperation and friendship between the two countries and their progress and prosperity in light of the friendly diplomatic relations that span 34 years. He highlighted the bilateral keenness to consolidate security and peace and support sustainable development through activating 70 bilateral agreements and MOUs. This year is uh, marks the 74th anniversary of the founding of the uh, People's Republic of China and also uh, the 34th anniversary uh, of uh, the establishment of our diplomatic ties between China and Bahrain. Uh, during these uh, past 34 years, uh, the relationship between China and Bahrain has been uh, developed very fast, especially uh, in the end of last year. Uh, the Chinese President, uh, His Excellency Xi Jinping, uh, had a very successful meeting with His Majesty Hamad in Riyadh, and also they reached a lot of uh, 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 a lot of uh, agreements at that meeting, and uh, uh, so in these years uh, the political uh, high-level exchanges between our two countries becomes more than before, and also pragmatic corporations and also cultural people-to-people uh, -people exchanges, we see a lot of achievements. And uh, so uh, we are uh, definite that uh, the relationship and cooperations between China and Berlin uh, will become more than before, and I hope so. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain has taken clear and systematic steps to become one of the advanced countries in higher education and an attractive destination for students seeking distinguished university education. More on this report. Since the beginning of university education in the Kingdom of Bahrain and implementing its strategies, it had the ability to empower generations to possess the elements of modernity and development and competitive competencies that meet the requirements of the labor market. All the efforts that have been made and the ambitious plans that have been developed aim to create a good educational climate in higher education institutions. The Kingdom of Bahrain was able to become an educational destination for students from various countries and its educational institutions were able to obtain international accreditation, which earned it a reputation for being able to attract prestigious universities, in addition to the existing cooperation between private universities and various international universities to encourage investment in higher education. The efforts of the government and those concerned with education focus on building an educational system that keeps pace with international standards and is in line with the best educational systems in the world. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain is committed to publish and use government data to enhance transparency and achieve cooperation among all segments of society. More on this report. Transparency and ease of access are among the most prominent features followed by the government of Bahrain in displaying data, especially digital data, which is made available to everyone on its various official platforms following the open data policy that was launched to encourage the use of public data and its application on a large scale to raise the standard of living and strengthening the national economy. The government believes that sharing data with the public is an important step to encourage cooperation with all groups that are divided into citizens, entrepreneurs, residents and visitors, and to involve them in a way that results in innovative solutions in an effort to improve the quality of life. All of this is done through the API application, which provides metadata, in addition to supporting geospatial data, linked and connected data, and supporting various formats to display them easily. The government also implemented laws to preserve privacy by identifying public data and separating it from personal and private data, as this policy was implemented under legislative frameworks and in accordance with the State Information and Documents Protection Law and the Personal Data Protection Law. A source of public official data made available by government platforms and available in all electronic formats with the aim of involving everyone in the process of development that is going in line with the comprehensive development plans and cultural renaissance of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Arab Parliament Speaker Adel Assoumi delivered a speech during the opening of the 9th Arab Interior Minister's meeting on human rights, which was held in Cairo. He